Sound is the sound. You know how we do. This is, of course, the lounge on Twitch. And we have, once again, in the lounge space, a good friend of ours, the Gumshoe Strut. Say what? Yeah. Hey. You get some Rick Ross and some air horns, dog. The, the, the MC, the producer, the artist known as the Gumshoe Strut is spending time with us in the lounge space today, even while stricken with COVID. Oh, man. We don't, we don't, we don't, we never say die, man. The hustle don't stop. <laughs> it was cool though, because the fact that, I mean, it's good that you can do it. At least you're feeling, you know, you're feeling well enough to do it. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like I was telling you before, it's, I'll either uh, sweat. I'm only wearing a toque just to conceal the sheen of, yeah, of yeah, yeah. sweat on my forehead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but it might get too hot at some point, so I might take it off and just reveal the, you know, the uh, the waterfall, or I might have a coughing fit and have to mute my mic for a minute. One of the two. It's we'll see. all good. We'll 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 dance a jig if you if you get into a coughing fit. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Whatever we got to do. Now, we have a brand new album. It's called Extra Extra. It's dropped like just like late October, right? Yeah, what date did I drop that? October 21st, I believe. Okay, sweet. So going into this album, what were your th- what was your thought process going into this album? What did you have envisioned for what this was going to be? Oh, so originally this album was going to be a fast follow-up to my uh well, again, I guess it still was technically a fast follow-up to my previous release from earlier this year, which was called NT2D. It was like right. a seven-song EP. Um, that one was a little bit more interest, well, a lot more introspective, a lot more personal, um, some heavier jams on there. Right. This album was like sort of was supposed to be a little bit of levity to that. So it was like a little bit, get back to the rap rap and just kind of, yeah, you know, remind, remind some folks what I got. And also same with the beats, the beats, I kind of like, I was, I had a few, I had this batch of beats that I was, uh, toying with for a long time. i given it to a few people to check out nobody ever bid on it um and then i don't know i just i started writing to one of them and so i wrote one song the first song i wrote was a song called whirlwind which is on the album um and then once i wrote that song kind of followed up with another one i was like okay maybe i'll come with like a five song ep or something like that just a quick bang 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 sort of follow up Mm -hmm. to the album and then everything's just kind of kept spiraling and then I kind of kept writing until I had about yeah eight nine ten songs and then uh I don't know I started thinking about ways to sort of fill out the songs because they were all just like sort of most of them were one verse with a hook right a couple of them I had written a second verse so I was like what can I do to these songs that you know just need a little bit more and I'm you know I just I don't know I just felt like okay maybe I'll look at some guests Originally, I was thinking just me. I was like, no, let's do some guests. And I started trying to think outside the box mm-hmm. um, with some of them. Um, the one song, Doodad Shit. Yeah. I uh, The posse cut. So the idea for that one, I really wanted to sort of just kind of capture that idea of like dads just talking shit, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rapping about life and whatever. And I was like, okay, who all can I get on this song? Like, I know a lot of rap dads. So I just started pinging people, reaching out. Um, and I was able to get it, you know, I was able to get a few people, like a few of the U.S. homies. Um, and then, of course, some of the closer homies. Um, a few that didn't work out. But I think, yeah, it came together. And then, yeah, other songs just, you know, kind of reaching out to some folks that I hadn't done songs with for a while or hadn't uh, had features with for a while. And yeah, it ended up coming together. When you were putting the posse cut together, when when did you know exactly who you wanted to have on it? Uh, well, I mean, I, w- I had an open invite to probably about eight or nine people. Okay. Um, and the ones that came through came through. Yeah. So basically I was just going to like put it out there to that, eight or nine people and see who came through. Cause I knew inevitably some weren't going to just yeah. how it goes. Right. Yeah. And so yeah, the, the dudes that did come through 
nailed it, I think. And, uh, you know, I think I, I start I start off the song with my verse trying to set the tone and just be a little bit more, you know, sort of tongue in cheek about like typical dad isms and stereo, yeah. stereotypical dad stuff. Um, and then and some it. of the some of the other dudes took it more from a personal kind of point of view. So I think yeah. it offers a good balance. Let me let me give you uh, a salute. Because... Not dead, please. Thank you. <laughs> no, for real. I'm just saying. Like, posse cuts will never die, and I'm, oh, I'm happy when people are still doing posse cuts. You know what? Honestly, I haven't had a posse cut on any of my albums. This is the first one I've ever that is done for an album. I'm glad that you did one. Me too. Since you've never done them before, was it just the natural process of creating? And and I mean, you know how things go. Things fall where they may in some points. Some things are planned out. But did it? was it just, oh, you know what? I've never done a posse cut. Maybe I'll do one now. Or was it, again, just a matter of that's how it played out? That's how it played out. It was the song. It was the yeah. song that inspired it. Right? Like Originally, I was just like, do that shit. I wrote the verse and, and kind of like, thought up the the goofy hook um and was like this sounds like a chant like this sounds like yeah a bunch of dudes should be saying this <laughs> yeah and i was like this would be perfect for a posse cut i should really like start reaching out i'm yeah. kind of very impatient when it comes to like making music because i've always mm. been it's always been just me right so yeah i have everything at my fingertips and i just yep. kind of work through it as you know I just plow through it um so actually making a posse cut and waiting on people's verses was that that was an exercise in and of itself for me i can't but imagine it yeah i mean like i i knew it had to be a posse cut and it and i wanted it to be more than like three yeah three three other verses on it other than mine so yeah. the fact that i was able to get like what was it like five other dudes or four at least four other dudes five dudes i think it turned out good now you, you've obviously let, let's talk about some people are on that record yeah well, uh, so that song, we have uh, in order of appearance, Nolto, who's a homie from Saskatoon, kind of does like a sing-songy rap style, mm -hmm. um, kind of a tongue-in-cheek funny guy, but also, uh, you know, if you listen to his, uh, his school of music, he kind of goes pretty deep, too. And he's, then, down with, uh, he's down with Saskatoon rap, right? Yeah, he's down with Saskatoon That's rap, rap. Yep. 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 Um, Shout out, shout out to the entire team. Hell yes. Absolutely. Big up. Hell yeah. And then we have uh, Staple, no, yeah, Staple Mouth, who is a uh, homie that I've recently connected with this past year um, through a, another label mate by the name of Noblonsky. He's a producer from Germany. Okay. He kind of connected us on a, on, a, on a song together, both mm -hmm. had us doing a verse. And so from that, I kind of reached out to him about getting on a song, which he ended up getting on another song on the album uh, called Line of Defense. Yep. And then when I realized that he was also a dad, I was like, well, you got to get on this one too. So he, he happily obliged. Nice. And so he jumped on that. And then uh, Idobolus, who is uh, the homie, he's also Saskatoon rap yep. rap. He also yep, yep. runs a huh. uh, late record label, um, online hip hop store called audio recon so if you're looking for that dope underground hip hop <laughs> audio recon is the place to go yep yep um he came through with a dope verse uh, also offers some good levity on his verse um and then who do we have after him capacity capacity is a homie from minneapolis he is again a connection through noblonsky mm. um they actually uh those two released an album earlier this year um, through Noblonsky's label, which I mixed and mastered. So that's sort of how I made that connection with uh, Capacity. Nice. And so, yeah, naturally reached out to him knowing that he was a dad because he's, he's on social media a lot, talking talking a lot about, you know, his fam and stuff like that. So I reached yeah. out to him, he got on it. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Yai, who, you know, like world's toughest dad. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> shout out to yeah most def. absolutely you had and some then, other you had some other guests on the album as well though yeah yeah so yeah jumping to outside of that song because that 
that's enough gifts for that one song. Um, what do we have? So yeah, like I mentioned, Staple Mouth. Yep. On Line of Defense, and then we had Pip Skid and uh, yep. Rob Crooks, uh, featured on a song as well. And then Azrael raps good. Yeah. Is also on another song as well. So those are all uh, homies that I've worked with in some capacity over the years. Azrael raps good. Actually have some beats to him right now. We're working on an EP together, um, which I'll produce and he'll do the rapping. Okay. Um, so looking forward to that, but yeah. I've got a couple of questions for you. Something that you mentioned earlier, when it comes to your beats, I mean, I'm going to assume because just based looking at it from a creative standpoint that anytime you, you, you record a beat, you either have an idea of who you think would sound good on it, or it's, you know, it's just something that came from inside you and, and is waiting for a home kind of thing. When, when you've, when you've hit off the homies with some beats and, you know, no one's really biting. Do you, do you ever sometimes get like, man, what, what's up with y'all? These are fire beats. What, what's, what's going on? You All ever, the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so when, when, when that happens, Obviously, in this instance, you're able to create like something out of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, when that kind of stuff happens, I get impatient, and I, if I'm not in a writing mood, I'm probably in a production mode. Right. So then I will do. A, I'll make an instrumental album or something. You know, that's just kind of what I've been doing over the years. So since 2021, when I kind of jump back in in this thing here um it's kind of almost alternated in, until the last couple but i've put out three instrumental albums in that time mm -hmm. um as well as three, well four now uh, vocal albums as well so kind of just make it happen that's basically it right um, i hear that i know I you know that. i know some people you know they work differently right like when i yeah. when i write my beats or I write a project it's kind of stream like most recently it's like stream of it's like a stream of uh, motivation inspiration just something is flowing through me for like a particular span of time mm -hmm. and that's what the project is okay. so with uh, Styles Make Fights which was back from 2022 or 2021 i can't remember but that album that's that's what it was it was just like i ha i was making all these beats and i was like man okay started writing one song started writing another song and i was like okay maybe i'm gonna try to do a seven inch i'll do four songs like two short songs on each side and then i had those and i was like ah seven inch ah, it's not really bang for the buck you know like so I started writing more songs. I had like seven songs. Okay, I'll do an EP. And then it was like, okay, next thing I know, I had like nine or 10 songs. <laughs> um, and, you know, they were all written within the span of like, I don't know, I'd say three weeks to a month. Okay. And then the same thing happened with uh, NT2D where it was like, I wrote the Zalia song, the song for my daughter called uh, Welcome to Life. And, and I just had like, okay, what do, what do I accompany with this? Like I could put this song out there just random or I could turn it into a project. And so I started writing to some other beats that I had sitting around that kind of just worked together. I knew the beats worked together. Yeah. And yeah, I kind of reached out to a few people to fill out some spots and I had an EP and I was like, okay, this is all it needs to be. I don't want it to be like a big crazy project or like a long album or something like that. Yeah. And so I kept it at that. And then uh, with this one, it was the same thing. I was like, there was nights where I was feeding my daughter at two in the morning, you know, uh -huh. one, 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 hand yeah. hold, one hand holding <laughs> the bottle and one hand holding my phone, like, you know, like writing, <laughs> writing lines in my phone um, yes, sir. and just listening to, listening to the seven or eight beats that I had from that batch of beats. So I it's, that. it's, yeah, I mean, it works both ways with, trying to get beats to people. I send out beats and yeah, people might listen to them. They say they're going to, they, they might not. Right. They probably, you know, some, some of these folks have tons of beats that they're sitting on. Right. 
tons of projects that they're already working on. So yeah. for them to get, you know, commit to writing something else, you know, sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit much. So, you know, I'm, I'm patient. I'm not going to be forceful. If you like it, let's do it. If, uh, you know, when you're ready, let's go. If, if not, I might have to take that beat back. Is what I'm saying. So how long do you give them? <laughs> depends on the, depends on uh, the beat. If you know? I need it, if I need right? it, if it, if that beat works with something and I got to make it work, yeah. then I got to do what I got to do. But I haven't had to do that really, to be honest, like very often, if, if at all, like I think maybe I can count like on one hand, the amount of times that I've had to steal a beat back. Okay. There might've been one or twice, once or twice where I forgot I gave somebody a certain beat or something like that too. But it is when, I, it is. when I think about your production and I've always thought this literally like from time, because of the fact that you can flex as as an MC over your own beats or anyone else's beats, and the fact that you can flex behind the boards, I've always wondered why you weren't scoring anything. I, I mean, I don't know how to write music. I don't know how to score anything. I, like, I just, when I make beats, it's, it's all, it's all by ear. Um, right. I mean, I've thought about like there's certain beats that I've made where I'm like, man, like this is more like kind of has like a feel of, mm -hmm. you know, being like the backing track to something, you know what I mean? Something going on and a visual and I've thought about it, but I've never like, yeah, there's just like, I guess the opportunity hasn't presented itself. I mean, if the opportunity ever presented itself, I, you know, I'd be, I would jump on it, but for me to go out and just do it on my own. It's like, you know, I have all these other things that I want to do. Yeah, so I hear that it, the priorities will, uh, will always exist with what's, what's, what's more, uh, accessible at the time, I guess. Uh, I'll be real, man. I think you can make, you know, I think you can make a bag scoring some shit. I could see you sitting in front of dailies envisioning how something should sound and, and scoring that shit. I literally, and I, I, I think you should get on that. All right, you can well, make an extra bag on side because you're, you're honestly like your production is dope. And when I've heard some of the instrumental shit, honestly, I can see you sitting in front of a, a bank of monitors staring at dailies scoring shit. Hey, well, like I said, I mean, I'll I'll take a look in the, into the world of scoring. Like I said, it's not something I've looked into. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've, I've seen some other folks out on like socials doing it. Yeah. And sparked my interest. But again, like, yeah, I haven't gone out of my way to really see what it's all about. So we'll see. We'll see what uh, the future holds. When you think about the what, what, what is accessible to artists in in Manitoba and and in Canada, do you find that there is enough support or accessibility for for artists to be able to seek out? opportunities like scoring i mean i don't know where the opportunities exist but i'm also not out pounding the pavement so right. for me like i'm I, pr I live a pretty sheltered life these days right i like think you do a little bit <laughs> yeah, well yeah no absolutely but i mean yeah. i you know so like prior to my daughter being born in 2021 late 2021 I mean, like, you know, I was getting out to shows here and there from time to time, you know, since my daughter was born, it's been a lot harder. And we moved out to Steinbeck, Manitoba. So I haven't, you know, I haven't been, I mean, I think I've been out to one, one or two concerts or something like that. Just like, just at the off chance. Right. Since. Yeah. And so. I don't know where, like, I don't, you know, I'm not out there making connections. I'm not out there trying That's to fair. see where, where the, where the inroads are. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm going to assume that opportunities exist for, for folks. Cause I, you know, I see other people making moves on socials. I don't know exactly who they're connecting with, what they're doing, if they're just making it happen, you know, like you need someone selling your shit. Yeah, absolutely. You literally but, just need to hire that person to sell your stuff to everything. Yeah, I guess so. And I've just always yeah. been so uh, just DIY that I've never even 
tried anything like that. <laughs> I only bring it up again because I think you would kill that shit. <laughs> For real. Well, I mean, I, I, I think more people need to hear the music, not just that I'm making, but the music that like my peers are making as well. Oh, yeah. my, you know, I would shout out the whole Saskatoon rap rap crew and the adjacent crews. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Definitely. I know you had uh, PLS on here yes, recently. Shout out like, PLS. like, I mean, and like, I mean, man, like those guys in the heyday, they were doing it. Right. Yeah. And now it's like, their audience is made up of like the people that followed them from back yeah. then to now and a few that have now straggled in because yeah. they're hearing it now. Right. But it's like, we're not out here attracting the kids. Like, you know, cause we're not out there, you know, shaking hands and literally kissing babies. Right. Like we're, you know, Politics. like, yep. yeah, like we just, so, that, that's not to say that the opportunities don't exist because, you know, at the same time, it's like I could see somebody like Ness, Nestor Windrush out there, like doing these like live mixtapes, huh. connecting with so many artists, right? Mm -hmm. And helping bring the community together and create opportunities for young and old artists alike. So things exist. It's just, you know, they exist for some people at some sometimes you know not everybody all the time so yeah. we'll see you know like i said like i mean i'd like to get out there i'd like to i mean i'd love you know i'd like the opportunity to play play some of these songs live at some point um because i think a few of them would come off super hype right um but yeah i mean like i said i'm not out there you know trying to politic my way into a show or you know like sell myself into a show either and i don't have the means to uh throw myself a show these days either so it is what it is i make the music and hope that folks listen put it out there as best i can make a video or something like that you know try to tell a friend to tell a few friends yep. See what come happens. on here so come on here the news. exactly because gum should strut is some dope shit. Yeah, Can we come just on say here. that so people know? <laughs> Straight plead up and my, down. Plead my, plead my case. For real though. Not for real. I, and you know this. I think I've always been straight up about, about how I felt about what you do, man. And I've always... No, man, I've always appreciated it, for sure. And I, and I think I've always told you that, you know what? You've got legs, man. Like, you can, you can do this for, a, like, a long time. And you've definitely been doing it for a minute but i just i can i i can i can envision you doing even more with your music you know what i'm well, saying absolutely and i mean the thing for me is what's crazy is is like nowadays it's like i'm doing it better than i've ever done it yeah like you know but to less you know like fanfare i guess you could say yeah um, yeah which is crazy but I think that's the case for all of us, for all of us in our like oh, totally. little generation oh, too, yeah. because, you know, we all just, you know, we're all, well, most of us, if not, you know, a good chunk of us are, you know, like entered in a new stage of life with different, wow. you know, new priorities that are trying to like, yep. you know, like, I don't know, just bring, bring, bring life together in a different way. Um, we're not out there, like I said, pound on the pavement, doing doing the things that you that you really need to do to be able to make those connects. Mm -hmm. So, but we're all so much better than we ever were. It's true, you know. And I know for myself, it's like even from the time that I, you know, like I took a little break to get back and started, you know, like since I made my album Heartbeat in 2021. Hmm. To now, I just I'm just like man, like each of these albums, like they all have a different vibe, but they're all like they all have a different vibe. They all have a different like they represent something different, and they all show like a like growth in a different way. So I don't know. Facts. Very interesting. Facts. Most definitely. Let me ask you something. The 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 most of this year has been inundated and 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 um 
filled with a lot of references or events or shows relating to Hip Hop 50. Obviously, 50th anniversary of the culture, big milestone, obviously. Um, and I feel like a bigger milestone for anyone who's been doing something in the culture for a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. yourself. So, so I want to, I want, I'm, I'm curious, what does hip hop 50 mean to the gumshoe strut? I mean, I guess it's just, you know, just reflection, right? Like an appreciation from looking back on, you know, some of the, the, the things that brought me into this um, and the things that preceded that and, you know, just the evolution of everything that we've, we've ever enjoyed about the culture, you know, in all, in all of its uh, capacities. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously I'm, you know, biased towards, you know, I'm <laughs> seeing, you know, is, there, is it being the thing that I a fair bias actively do, fair bias. Um, <laughs> fair bias. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it, it really, at the end of the day, it's just, it's, it's, it's a, ref, it's all about reflection, right? It's all about just appreciating and knowing where this comes from and, you know, and a reminder hopefully to current generations that, you know, there is, there is a history. There are like, this comes from something, you know, deep and important and, you know, it's super important to uphold, like, just like any culture, the, you know, the roots and the, the things that help to cement it. And, you know, I guess things are going to evolve, but, Yes, we got to remember where things came from and how they came to be and try to try to at least uphold to some degree the memory. The memory. That's at the very least. <laughs> at the very least, right? Do you think that the regard for Hip Hop 50 is equal amongst all generations or do you think that Certain generations obviously will be predisposed to holding a little more in their heart for hip hop 50. But do you think, as later generations come along, do you think that they will hold hip hop 50 or hip hop 75 or hip hop 100 in the same regard as we do hip hop 50? I mean, it, I think it all depends on what happens, mm -hmm. <laughs> what happens in the world, what happens mm -hmm. in the music. You know, like we we all know that there's a lot of evolution that has occurred in hip hop. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's you know there's there's always the folks that are gonna you know maintain the roots, but then the you know in the I guess the public, the main public eye, right? So I think there will always be the people that are gonna maintain you know that like foundational like approach right there's right. always going to be an underground oh yeah and then and then there's always going to be you know like a mainstream or whatever you want to call it oh, right yeah. and then there's going to be the in between and it's just depending what happens like the appreciation for the history within each of those little subsets will will waver depending on the evolution of what happens in those subsets yeah so i and it's tough to say like you know like i said there's people that i i can guarantee you there's people that could give a shit about hip hop 50. oh yeah you know and are probably selling a ton of fucking records yeah you know what or, i mean and, or even if they like they may not necessarily not give a shit but they sure sell like it's not taking up much space <laughs> No. In their brain. <laughs> but, I, but I'll bet you that there's people that there's like people that are just like, you know, like they're like almost like fuck hip hop. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they just, they, they could care less about that shit. Like you, you think about like some of the, like, do you know, I think like fucking Tom McDonald or some or whatever that dude's name is, gives a shit about hip hop 50. Yeah. You know, yeah. probably not, <laughs> you know. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. I, I, I see where you're coming from with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that on top of what you're saying, 
because the culture has always been driven by the people that practice it, it's really all going to come down to, you know, where do the streets take it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the co the commercial side will always follow the streets. That's right. We know that. So wherever that's wherever that's popping, that they're they're gonna go with that. It's just it's just funny because you know I I think, I mean not like I don't spend amounts of time on it, but I, I'd be crazy to to say that I don't think about where I think things are headed, and you know you try to you try to play future teller when when you're trying to understand what's happening right now in music in in the culture and and in in the world you know what i mean but yeah. it's, it's just that, that's why I, I i'm curious you know like how how you see hip-hop 50 because you bring up such great points that there, there well, are I mean, gonna be people that hold it in very high regard and i don't see there's just gonna be people that are like what <laughs> well absolutely I mean, did i sell a people. bag last week <laughs> There's gonna, man, I mean, the thing is, too, is like there's gonna be people that just maybe it brings them back in, right? Maybe, yeah, it reminds them, yeah. and then they're like, oh, fuck, man, I love that, I love that shit, like you know, yeah. and they start going back on classics and yeah, whatever, right? And then some people that just don't, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, even for myself, right? It's like how closely I pay attention to music, like these days compared to when I was younger is far less like, cause I right. just have competing priorities, right? Like, yeah. you know, life is just it's different. So, yeah. you know, like a lot of what I pay attention to is, you know, what's closer around me. And then it kind of extends out based on sort of what sparks my interest or what, you know, somebody puts me on to or whatever. Right. But I'm not out there seeking things right. like I used to when I was young. Yeah. And, you know, hitting up the record shops and like taking a chance on, you know, whatever 12 inch I pull out from the, you know, yeah. from the shelf or whatever. Yeah. So it's a different, much different approach. Um, oh, we lost him. We lost the gumshoe strut. He went black. He pulled the Jay Z, fade to black. Strut man, you disappeared. I do not know where you went. But uh, he is he is f he is gone. We have of course the Gumshoe Strut was live right here on the lounge on Twitch. We had him, and there he's back. Yo, <laughs> can you hear me? I, yeah, I was vamping, dog. <laughs> no, you can't hear me. Oh, that's crazy. I can hear you, but you can't hear me. Come back in and come back out. Yeah, yeah, do that, do that. There you go. He's going to come back in and come back out. Extra, extra, of course, is the record that he's got out right now. It's it's very dope. If it isn't obvious, I am a, a Gumshoe Strut fan. Uh, the new album is dope. He, we've been talking about some of the guests, and just now we're talking about Hip Hop 50, and I believe he's back. I am back. I don't know what happened he there. I do not know either. I, got, I, had a, I had somebody phone me, and it just... Oh, there you go. Fucking just completely ruined everything. You mean you didn't put your do not disturb on? I did. Well, no, Strut I didn't. Man. It was my mom. It was my, mo it was my mom too, and I, I pressed decline, and it, it still messed everything up. Do you, I don't like. I don't know if you set your phone, but do you set your phone to to different focuses so that you have work focus, personal focus, and all that? No, so no, certain people night, get just, through to certain focuses. <laughs> no, I've, I've never gone that deep. I just nighttime. I got it on. Do not disturb. So there you go. That's it. There you go. I was going to ask you because we were we were pretty, we were pretty much getting into to like my last question, but the fact that you you were starting to get into it, so I got to ask, what are you bumping right now? What do you like to like groove to? Good question. Yeah, um, you can't look. No, you can't look. No fair. Oh, no, I'm just I'm, something I'm, that makes I, something that makes you go. When I, when I think, I look off to the side. Um, <laughs> no, I'm thinking about like the things that I've been. Repay. I just started listening to that new Aesop rock record. Which okay. Sounds, sounds pretty interesting. Okay. Um, I was about to say, what'd you think? Well, I'm enjoying it. it. I haven't yeah. I haven't absorbed it entirely, but yeah. I am I am I mean I've always liked his stuff. Okay. Um, but I think his last couple albums have been 
better than the 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 ones just prior. So I've kind of yeah, this one I was definitely interested in checking. So yeah. been enjoying that. Um, what else have I been listening to? The Atmosphere record. Did you did you get into it because you knew it was dropping, or is it one of those? Yo, did you hear there's a new. I you know what honestly I didn't I I listened to it once. I haven't okay. gone back to it. Okay. So I haven't really absorbed that record either. I felt like some of the beats I wasn't really, they weren't hitting me the right way. That's fair. But it could have been just what I was expecting maybe and wasn't getting right away. So I have to, I have to go back on it because I know a couple other people that, that I've talked to have kind of suggested that I should check it out again. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see how people are feeling it. I'm really yeah. curious because of, because of the gap in time. Yeah, no doubt. You know what I mean? I want to see like, do people does he still resonate with folks or you know, just out of curiosity? Yeah. Um, what else what have else? I been listening to? Well, I check. You know what I've been enjoying? Uh, Gully. Okay. From the Lytics. Okay. I've been enjoying the sing the the, the single got record out. Yeah, we actually got to get him on too. Damn, he really should. Uh, yeah, I've been enjoying like the. Yeah, so I've been enjoying like the drops of like singles that he's doing now, like the EP that he just dropped. Yeah. Um, so I've given, given, given that a couple spins and been enjoying that quite a bit. Um, the Park Like Setting album, of course. So as you can see, my theme is, is like, like I was saying, it's kind of like that inside yeah. out sort of uh, the way I listen to music. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of anything. I think what else is in my alpha? Have you heard of them? It's a uh, dose one and oh. mestizo. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. produced, produced by a, uh, a producer by the name of Mediogre. Mediogre, uh, okay. I have the, not heard that yet. The Mediogre, okay, which is supposed to sound like the mediocre, yeah. Um, <laughs> but he, um, though they have they just dropped like a like a little short EP. It's like okay. a posse cut, posse cut with a bunch of bunch of rappers of you know, Buck sixty fives on it and a couple other folks. Um, but then they put out an album earlier this year, I believe, which is I don't know, it's crazy shit. It's it's wild. It's, okay, yeah, it's really good. I I highly suggest checking it out. It's kind of okay, yeah, that's... almost almost dark, but like doesn't pull you down. If, if that makes sense, I hear that. Yeah, I hear that. Really, really good stuff. But I mean, like, yeah, Dose One of the rappers, like, he's a crazy man. So, as enjoyable, as enjoyable record. Is there is there anyone from Manitoba that you notice that's on the come up, where you see legs? Trying to think of folks that I'm. That I'm seeing around. I mean, like I said, I don't get out to a lot of shit, so I don't really see who's doing what, especially yeah. not live. Um, I know uh, what's his name, Cade, Peg City Cade on Instagram. Mm. He's got some rhymes for sure. Okay. Um, trying to think of who else i mean man it's a, it's just tough for me like that's fair you know i feel like yeah, i feel like the totally. old uh, the old the old uh, ogre that doesn't uh, ah, don't say that doesn't know about all the old shit yeah. all, all the new shit don't but. say that you far from old man come on now no i just whenever, whenever people bring up the old thing i literally look at them like yo that is so in your head like ah, i said you, i sound like that <laughs> i am the old you know gravy gravy well yo man i really want to thank you for spending time with us in the lounge space you know that that there's always room for you up in here we always have time for you regardless of 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 the time or day regardless of whether you have COVID or not we always have time for you here the new album is fire i highly recommend you grab extra extra not just if if you've always dug the stretch shit but if you just love rap in general I highly recommend it. It is very dope. You you never disappoint, dog. Appreciate that, man. For real. I always appreciate the opportunity to come 
rap with you about uh oh yeah the rap about the rap oh yeah definitely maybe 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 we'll have to get you one of the other podcasts at some point yeah anytime i mean you're still into wrestling are you still into wrestling yeah okay might have to get you on top ropes and toe pays <laughs> yeah dude i could i could oh man <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I thought about it, man. We could do like a, a rap and wrestling episode on that other podcast because of the amount of rappers that love wrestling. <laughs> Absolutely. I got, you know what? I got to listen to that podcast because I I just saw a little bit about it recently and I, I'm like, what? What is this? So I got to get up on that, but you just uh, you just lit the fire, so I will. Word up. Now, I feel like I feel like we could definitely discuss some wrestling shit. Oh God, man! One of the homies, uh, you... MC Homeless, who's uh, rolls with the Saskatoon folk rap crew as well. Okay, he's based out of okay. the U.S. He just he he's actually on a tour. Just finished a tour with Cool Keith. He, he's put out oh, a couple. Damn. Uh, okay. He's just put out a couple of, like singles, uh, vinyl, like twelve inches. Okay. Like, with him and Cool Keith, um, and they just did this tour. But he is a huge wrestling fan. We've we've talked about doing uh, some wrestling themed songs and trying to hey. figure, out, figure out a figure out a way to make them, uh, you know, come off there the was, right way. There's, there's always room for more wrestling songs, yo. <laughs> Absolutely, man. There's always room for more, especially at a certain level when people don't know, people won't even, most people won't even know what, the, what you're talking about. But yeah, yeah, yeah for real. Have you have you checked out any any indie shows in the last like five years or so? I wish uh, mm. I have. I I don't get a chance to get out to the indie shows. That's fair. But I, you know, I mean, I'm online. You know, I'm watching all the weeklies and hell yeah, know, reading up on my uh, my my wrestling news. Hell yeah, see oh, what's going on. Just I mean, it's I don't know if is Steinbeck the. Do, is Steinbeck generally one of the dates that, that they hit when when they do the indie shows, like whether it's CWE or we there was one in Mitchell, like maybe okay. in the spring. Okay. That I I had considered going out to it, but I don't know anybody in Steinbeck. I might not, my wife's not gonna go with me. <laughs> so my, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although my son is like he's super into wrestling now. Hey, hey. Like I don't there you go. Just like two months ago, something clicked in him and all of a sudden he's like I can't even get him to stop talking about it. <laughs> so it, he might be down. I might be an excuse, you know, to get out to some, to some stuff like that. When just really quick about Steinbeck, have you entertained throwing a show in Steinbeck? I thought about it, but I don't, okay. like I said, I don't know anybody. I just yeah. joined a men's basketball team. Um, okay. There you go. So I've met a couple people, but that's, yeah. that's about all I know in Steinbeck. I don't know anybody in Steinbeck, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm you know, curious. I mean, just the only reason I bring that up is because there is a battle that takes place in Steinbeck in the summer. Oh, really? Yeah, yearly. Oh, oh. And it's well, been going on to... for a minute. Okay, well, I will have to keep my eyes and ears peeled because I had no idea. Yeah, and, and the only reason I bring it up is because if they're... Not that in... I'm going to go battle because well, I'm, I mean, I'm way past that. I'm way past that. I bring it up because if they're if they're doing that in the summer, honestly, I can't see why things can't be scheduled around that time frame when people are there to see hip hop in Steinbach. That's true. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm sure people are looking for things to do. I mean, right? I don't know. I mean, I yeah. I mean, I I assume there's there's things that go on out here. I I just I haven't sought them out, so I, right. I don't know. Of course, that's fair. That's completely fair. We might have we might have to look into that into the future. It'd be interesting. Yeah. It'd be, I think it'd be fun to to see that happen. Well, if you come across anything, ping me. Oh, I will. I might. Same thing goes for those for for any you know you see a, a wrestling event or something like that. Let me oh know. yeah 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 definitely. Oh definitely Matt definitely. Well yo man BJ, I really want to thank you. Always appreciate you spending time with us in the lounge space. Again, the new album, Extra Extra, out right now. Go get it. Bandcamp. Stream it. Like it. Subscribe to his shit. Help his Freak analytics. <laughs> follow him yeah. on social. Drop your socials so they can follow you. At the Gumshoe Strut on Instagram. And uh, yeah, the same thing on uh, Facebook. 
like that. I don't, I don't like do that. the I don't do the TikToks or nothing like that. So I'm always waiting to see who's gonna hop on TikTok next. You know why? Because I don't, I don't have is, it. I just don't. I just don't. I just don't got what it takes, man. Well, <laughs> even for rappers, it's a it's such a fucking different beast. The way I, you have I to imagine. market yourself. Oh yeah. my god. Props to I'm, the rappers that are doing it, man. Yeah, no. Hey, all respect to man. I just, yeah, I'm, not, man. I, I'm not out here trying to make content like that. It's a different, different ball game over there on TikTok. <laughs> I struggle to make like a do an Instagram story. So, <laughs> well, yo, man, good looking out. Feel better. I hope you. I hope you and the rest of the family recover very quickly. Fuck COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seriously, much obliged, man. All right, be easy, man. All right, Lou. Peace. Take it easy.